adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Starring that Jet A. Jerry Olace, Rocket J. Squirrel. And his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose. Hi, glad to see you again. Like we. We got some great things on the show today. Like what, like what? Well, you ought to know, Bullwinkle. You're in some of them. Well, let's get started. who went past the third grade surely must remember the thinkings of the great thinker, Hypotenuse. It was he who said, To be fumus obsidio septum doro. Which roughly translated means everybody can do something. How very true that is. Take Otis Gum of Owl's Eye, Nebraska, for example. He can put six flashlights in his mouth at one time. <laughs> And let us not forget Adler Suggins. Mr. Suggins went over Niagara Falls sitting on a large bagel. No one had ever done that before. Adler Suggins only did it once. Hey, Bullwinkle, did you read where Adler Suggins went over Niagara Falls on a bagel? That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Didn't think they made those big bagels anymore. No, I meant it was amazing he went over the falls. Oh, shucks, that's nothing. Everybody can do something. It's like Hippopotamus said, to Bufungus Obsidian September daddy or something. Oh, yeah? Well, what can you do? For one thing, I can remember everything I ever ate. What did you have for breakfast two weeks ago today? Six pancakes, four eggs sunny side up, a slice of ham, three hot dogs, a bowl of chili, and a raisin cookie. Golly, that's amazing! Just talent, I guess. Of course, Rocky and Bullwinkle didn't know it then, but the simple fact that Bullwinkle can remember everything he ever eats is about to cause them both big trouble. For at that very moment, in the underground hideout of Boris Badenov... Boris, are you in that trunk? Nobody here but us souvenirs. Stop hiding, Boris. Fearless Leader is calling on radio. I can't talk to him, Honeybun. Fearless Leader is mad with me because I still didn't get Elliot Ness. Don't be silly. He can't bite you over radio. Oh, boy, you don't know Fearless Leader. <clears throat> Hello, handsome Fearless Leader. I like you better than any Fearless Leader in the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh I mean, I, I know I bungled last three foreign intrigue jobs, but I, but I don't want to be liquidated. You know I can't stand pain. One more assignment. Honeybun Fearless Leader is giving me one more chance. Good for you, darling. I have pencil, Fearless Leader. Shoot. I mean, <laughs> what is assignment? Yes? You got it. And don't worry, Fearless Leader. This time I will not fail. Cross my heart and hope to die. I was afraid you'd say that. Bye-bye, Fearless Leader. What is new assignment, Boris? Kill Moose? No, steal formula. What formula? Who cares? Any formula. Boris couldn't have picked a better day to look for a formula, for in another part of the city, one Dr. Bermuda Schwartz was testing his new invention for the army. Now, when I push this plunger, that bridge over there is going to blow up with a million pieces. Very well, Doctor. Let it go. All right. Amazing, that bridge blew up without a sound. <laughs> I thought you'd notice that. Congratulations, Doctor. You have invented the first silent explosive. I call it Hushaboom. And you've got to admit, it's a little bit different. Now, it's very difficult to keep a thing like a silent explosive quiet. So when the three o'clock paper hits the streets... X-ray, X-ray, Hushaboom goes over with bang. Read all about it. A silent explosive. Oh, how nice. Well, that does it, Natasha. Professor Bermuda Schwartz is target for tonight. And the villain skulked off toward the professor's laboratory, little realizing that our heroes were heading toward it from the other direction. What will happen when they meet? We'll find out next time in Boomtown or Destination Schwartz.
Last time, you remember, we heard quite a discussion of Bullwinkle Moose's one outstanding talent. You can remember everything you ever ate. Every time I swallow, it's a stroll down memory lane. Meantime, a short distance away, a professor named Bermuda Schwartz had just developed a silent explosive called Hushaboom. This, of course, gave him A1 priority on Boris's hate parade. But, Boris, how are you going to steal the formula? Steal it? He's going to tell it to me. Tell it to you? Why should he? Observe, Natasha. And the wily villain ducked out of sight and reappeared a moment later dressed as an old lady. Boris, this makes him tell you the formula? Certainty. What boy would keep a formula from his own mother? His mother? Who's there? Bermuda, baby, it's time. I know that, but who are you? Burmy boy, you don't know your own mother? Mommy, come in, mommy. Tell me where you got the mustache. And Boris entered the house with a gullible professor. An hour later, he emerged smiling triumphantly. Boris, you got it? Natch, I got it. What took you so long? I had to bake my boy his favorite cake. You baked a cake? It's the least a good mommy can do. Well, see what you can do about that, mommy. Sure enough, coming toward them were Rocky and Bullwinkle, who, oddly enough, had no idea at all of what was going on. What's all about that? You hear, Boris, they're not even in on the plot. We don't take chances. Come on, I got idea. And the two villains approached the proprietor of a nearby fruit cart. Hey, you want to sell me this fruit cart? Sure, that will cost you $50,000. $50,000, you out of your mind? You got no choice, so you got to buy it. We do? You in a bad trouble. You stole a formula from a Professor Schwartz, and now you got to hide from a moose and a squirrel. Hey, how come you know all this? Hey, what do you think? I don't watch the Bullwinkle show. Well, I got no choice. I got to hand it to you. Okay, let me have it. Or is he trusted you? Yes, apparently he doesn't watch the show regularly. But I don't understand, Dalek. How will this keep formula safe? Watch carefully. I write formula down on inside of banana. Zip up the peel, tear up the paper. Now all we got is banana. Who would suspect it hides formula? I would. Oh, you're sneaky, no good, Natasha. Oh, Boris, you do care, don't you? Hush, here comes Moose and Squirrel. And at that moment, fate played her final card. For instead of passing the innocent-looking fruit cart, Bullwinkle stopped and said, See, I chew like a banana right now. How much are they? Bananas? Yeah. We have no bananas today. See, that'd make a great song title. Those are bananas right there. Yeah, how much? They're not for sale. Oh, come on, I'll give you a quarter for one. No. Fifty cents? Bullwinkle, that's too much. A dollar. Well, Boris, I... no. Two dollars. Bullwinkle, no. It's a deal. Boris, no. Pay the man the two dollars, Rock. And Bullwinkle walked off munching a two-dollar banana containing a million-dollar formula. How does it taste? Expensive. Boris, how could you do such a thing? I didn't want to. He took advantage of my crooked nature. This will ruin you with fearless leader. What are you going to do, darling? Moose has ruined Boris, so now Boris will ruin Moose. And a steamroller can do it, too. Be sure to thrill to our next episode entitled Flat of the Land, or A Rolling Stone Gathers No Moose. Well, as long as you're back anyway, I might as well explain what's been going on. We all know that everybody can do something, even Bullwinkle, who proved beyond a doubt that he can remember everything he ever ate. What did you have for dinner 25 years ago today, Bullwinkle? Uh, moose milk. Boy, you really can remember everything you ever ate. That was too easy, Rock. 25 years ago, I always had moose milk. You were an addict? No, a baby. But Bullwinkle is grown up now, and he must learn to face the facts. And the facts are that Boris Badanov has managed to steal the secret formula to a silent explosive called Hushaboom. Then, disguising himself as a fruit peddler, he wrote the formula on the inside of a banana for safekeeping. But unable to resist making a fast buck, he sold the banana to Bullwinkle, who ate it, formula and all. Ruined to the quick, Boris immediately set out to ruin Bullwinkle. <laughs> Any second now, Moose is going to be part of Elm Street. Bullwinkle's going to get run over by the steamroller. I gotta save him. And with that, the plucky squirrel shot into the air like a pullet. That's bullet. Uh, that's bullet. Boris not only missed the moose, but was unable to find the brakes to the steamroller. You all right, Bullwinkle? Just fine. What happened? Somebody tried to run over you with a steamroller. Oh, a squash and run drive, Ray. Oh, well. <laughs> Bye now. Thanks again. Who's that? This is a manhole, isn't it? Yeah. 
the with a man. Rocky and Bullwinkle then crossed the street and entered the drugstore where they knew beyond a doubt they could get a soda to calm their nerves. What they didn't know beyond a doubt was that Boris Badenoff and his henchwoman Natasha were under the table. How about a banana split, Bullwinkle? No thanks, Rock. I ate a banana a little while ago with H2O, NH3, C2H5, PDQU235 and the pinch of salt written on it. Boris must remember his formula. And so when Rocky and Bullwinkle left the drugstore, Boris was waiting with a fiendish plan to extract the formula from the innocent moose. Here comes moose. Let him have it, Natasha. Hey! Hey, what's the big idea of hitting me with a pie? Say, hey, you sound mad. Well, that's funny. I am mad. You can't be mad. Why? Look at that lollipop. What about it? That's really not a lollipop. That's a camera. Really? Sure, you're on television. No. A camera in a lollipop? What's the matter? You never hear of candied camera? Say, then you must be... Right. Alan Fink. Go on, say something to our audience. Well, what shall I say? Just tell us a little about yourself. Like, what was it that you ate about one hour ago? See, folks, about an hour ago I ate a banana with h 20 h 3 c 2 h 5 pdq u 235 and a pinch of salt written on it. That's it. Come on, honeybone. Flushed with success, Boris ran to the nearest telephone and called Phyllis Leader. Hello, Phyllis Leader. Grab pencil. I got formula. It's H2O. H2O-C. I'll call you back. I'm practically liquidated. Who can remember all those numbers? And so, once again, innocence triumphs over evil. And the secret formula is to remain forever safely hidden in the confines of a moose's stomach, never to be heard from again. <coughs> Oh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that either. What is in can be taken out. Is this really the end of Bullwinkle? Be with us next time for Mac the Knife or Operation Moose. Seven out of ten doctors agree that stomach trouble is both universal and profitable, but... Bullwinkle, what are those little A's and B's? The A stands for apple. And the B? Stands for banana. I ate one on St. Swithin's Day. When? St. Swithin's Day, 1943. Wow! Yes, Bullwinkle has the rather unique ability to remember everything he eats. The trouble is that Bullwinkle ate a banana on which Boris Badenov had written a secret formula. I will get formula back even if it kills Moose. Oh, I am so happy you see things my way, darling. Let's go. Boris, wait! On the corner. Wait on the corner for what? He's a policeman. How do we get past him? Fui. Who's scared of policemen? And folding his switchblade knife and putting it in his hat, the smug Boris walked right up to the policeman and said, Officer, would you hold my hand across the street? Certainly, little fella. Say, that's quite a mustache you got there. My mommy drew it for me, didn't you, mommy? That's right, darling. Well, give me your hand, little lad. Take my hand. I'm a stranger in Steubenville. And the unsuspecting policeman led Boris and Natasha right across the street. There you are, me bucko. And the kindly policeman patted Boris on the head. Unfortunately for the villain, his switchblade knife had a hair trigger and... <laughs> Sainted Aunt Agnes McGee, what's that? It's a fingernail file. A 12-inch nail file? I got 12-inch fingernails. Come along with me, you're under arrest. As a spy? No. As a crook? No. As a killer? No. What then? As a juvenile delinquent. And so Boris Badenov's scourge of civilization was taken to juvenile hall, given a hot bath, dressed in sleepers, and tucked in for the night. Next day he appeared in court, was lectured by the judge, and his switchblade taken away. Then he was released in Natasha's custody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Natasha, the disgrace. Me, world's greatest villain, a juvenile delinquent. What will fearless leader say? Well, cheer up, Sonny. You Don't call me Sonny. Boris Badenov, call Boris Badenov. There he is now. Fearless leader. Hello, fearless leader, old body boy. You got secret formula yet, Badenov? Not yet, but any minute now. You know me. That's why I keep checking up. Well, your time is running out. Goodbye, Sonny. Oh, boy. Well, of course, now Boris knew he had to get Bullwinkle off to some deserted spot where the police wouldn't see him. Okay, here is what we do. Boga, roga, boga, doga, boga, roga, boga, boga. I can't understand the word you say, Boris. Speak up! Oof. I said, boga-roga-poga-doga-boga-roga-boga-doga. That's what I thought you said. 
You think I'm going to let every Tom, Dick, and Gordon in on the plot? Apparently not, for just a short time later, a familiar-looking figure pedaled a bicycle up to our heroes and said, Telegram for Moose, telegram for Bullwinkle. Here, boy. Sign here. Okay. You're supposed to sign name. That's an X. It's my middle initial. Oh. And here's a nickel for your trouble. Nickel? Couldn't you make it a dime? I got two wives and baby goldfish to support. Make it seven cents. Okay, I give up one wife. Cheapskates. What does the telegram say, Bullwinkle? Oh, boy, get a load of this. Congratulations, you have been chosen to spend a free weekend at Lake Kitchy Itchy Lodge. Signed, the management. Isn't that nice? Well, no. For if Bullwinkle had only known anybody who spent a weekend at Lake Kitchy Itchy Lodge stayed there permanently. But we'll find out more in our next episode, Two Days to Doom or The Last Weekend. Well, it all started when Bullwinkle swallowed a banana containing a formula for a silent explosive called Hushaboom. Now, Boris is trying to get it back by hook or by crook. I got a choice. And in our last episode, the boys had received a mysterious invitation to a free weekend at a mountain lodge. Wait a minute. Why would Lake Kitchy Itchy Lodge offer you a free weekend for no reason at all? Who cares? Never look a gift Kitchy Itchy in the mouth, I always say. It was 17 hours later that they arrived at what they thoroughly believed was to be a carefree weekend. No, just a free weekend. Are you sure this is Lake Kitchy Itchy, Bullwinkle? Not really, no. There's no lake. There's nothing here but that big old run-down house. We'd better go back. But at that moment... For he's a jolly good moose, for he's a jolly good moose, for he's a jolly good moose, which nobody can deny. Welcome to Kichi Ichi Lodge. Gee, who are you? Who else? I am Egbert Kichi Ichi himself. <laughs> kind of a funny name, isn't it, Brock? Kichi Ichi? No, Egbert. If this is really a lodge, where are all the other guests? There are no other guests. It's the middle of the slow season, isn't it, Hannibal? Yes, Egbert, darling. When is your slow season? From 1926 to 1982. But look at it this way. I can spend all my time just taking care of you. <laughs> <laughs> thoughty, mighty thoughty. We better be careful, Bullwinkle. I'm afraid he's after you for some reason. Don't be such a worry war, Rock. Just the same, I'm not going to let you out of my sight. You hear that, Boris? Squirrel is not going to let Moose out of sight. We'll see about that. And he did, too, for after Bullwinkle had freshened up... Well, Moose, you look fresh as Wyatt. How would you like to step out on porch to see the view? Why, I think that would be lovely. Bullwinkle would have stepped out onto the porch, but for one thing, there was no porch. Plunging down two stories, the endangered Moose landed... ...in a carefully prepared tub of cement waiting at the bottom. Now what, darling? We fan him until he's dry. And that being a fast-drying cement developed by some gentleman in Chicago in 1928, it wasn't long before... Ah, there's a rock. Now to crack him open. Stand back, Hannibal. With a well-placed blow from a hammer, the cement split down the middle and fell into two perfect halves. Big deal. So now what you got, Boris? A perfect moose mold. That's what. And putting the cement mold together, Boris poured in a lifelike when dry plastic. When he had finished... Boris, you have made a dummy that looks just like other dummy. Uh, I mean, moose. Right, and that is how we fool Squirrel. You ho, Bullwinkle, where are you? Here comes Squirrel now. Quick, we take moose to basement. Bullwinkle, I thought I told you to wait for me. Bullwinkle? Bullwinkle, why didn't you answer me? <laughs> now, moose, I got you where I want you. What do you say to that? Why don't you answer me? Why didn't you say something, Bullwinkle? Why does he just stand there like a dummy? Dummy? Darling, you don't suppose. Oh, boy. Please, Moose, don't share up your mouth. Could it be that I got the dummies mixed up? We'll find out in our next episode entitled Two Moose is Loose or Which One Has the Phony? Our story thus far is simplicity itself. What else? Bullwinkle swallowed a secret formula for a silent explosive, and Boris is trying to get it back. Luring Rocky and Bullwinkle to a deserted house, the villain was able to obtain a cement mold of the gullible moose and thus make a lifelike dummy which looked exactly like Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle, will you stop standing there like a dummy and speak to me? What would you like me to say, Rock? You pulled another boo-boo, Boris. I noticed that, but Boris Badenov never gives up. Back to the basement. 
I still think Mr. Kitchy Itchy is up to no good. I'm going to snoop around and see what I can find out. Okay, and I'll step out on the porch for another look at the view. Look. Meanwhile, in the basement... Boris, what are you doing with dummy moose? There now, isn't she pretty? Ah, uh, pretty ugly. Not only that, but I fixed it up so that she walks and talks. Watch this. Hello, handsome. This is a recording. Hello, handsome. This is a recording. Pure genius, darling. Now comes best part. I got bomb inside. When Moose makes date with Dommy... Then it's booby trap. Right, and it's about to trap a booby. <laughs> so Mr. Kitchy Itchy is after Bullwinkle. I gotta get upstairs, but fast. But Rocky wasn't fast enough. Come, Natasha. All we got to do now is find Moose. That was easy because Bullwinkle was just getting up off the ground outside. The view is lovely, but it goes by so fast. Oh, Moose, somebody here I like you to meet. Who's that, Mr. Kitchy Itchy? Bullwinkle, meet Jane Moosefield. <gasps> Jane Moosefield? You mean the Jane Moosefield? Who else? I will push button, then leave you two to get acquainted. Run, Natasha, bomb goes off any minute. My goodness, the Jane Moosefield. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hello, handsome. This is a recording. Friendly little thing. <laughs> Leave us go to the kitchen. I shall fix us a bite to eat. My arm, madame. Meanwhile, Rocky had regained his senses and was rushing to find Bullwinkle. Golly, I hope I'm not too late. Would you like me to crumble up some crackers in your soup, Miss Moosefield? Hello, handsome. This is a recording. Hello yourself. How about the crackers? Bullwinkle, that's all. Me. Who cares if she's smart? Get a load of that figure. You don't understand. I gotta get you away from here. And with that, the plucky squirrel pulled Bullwinkle out of the old house and just in the nick of time. For it was then that Jane Moosefield, ticking loudly, crossed the room to the closet where Boris and Natasha were hiding. Bum should have gone off long time ago. I wonder what... Somebody's at door. <laughs> yes? Hello, handsome. This is a recording. Well, hello! Look, honey bun, it's Jane Moose! Good heavens! What was all that about? I don't know, unless it had something to do with you remembering everything you ever ate. Oh, stuffy nonsense. By the way, what did you eat last? Uh, J-X-Q-T-R-L-P. But when that doesn't mean anything. Sure it does. It means I ate alphabet soup. But unbeknownst to our heroes, a faraway figure is watching them on a super snooperscope. Pennsylvania must have that formula. We shall use our most ruthless, brutal, cold-blooded scoundrel. You mean... Yes, I go myself. Well, it looks as if our boys have picked up a number one enemy. Tune in next time for The Moose and the Monster, or Nothing But the Pest. Last time, you remember, Phyllis Leader himself had decided to try to get the secret formula for a silent explosive called Hushaboom from our friends. Observe, Dimitri, you know what this is? Is plan of New Pennsylvania skyscraper? Idiot! This is a silhouette of a moose, and here inside the moose is a banana. And you know what is inside the banana? Another moose? No, you idiot! Inside banana is secret formula. Of course. And we've got to steal it. Why? Because they won't give it to us. Very logical. How are we going to steal it? I shall use deception, fraud, double-crossing, and trickery. Of course. It's, it's the Pennsylvanian way. way. Meanwhile, our heroes were just leaving the ruins of Lake Kitchy Itchy Lodge. Gee, the whole place just blew up in the air. Bullwinkle, I think that explosion was meant for you. Oh, they shouldn't have done it. No. A simple fanfare would have been plenty. But... Maybe with a few white doves let loose. No, I mean somebody's trying to get rid of you. Well, they've done a good job. What do you mean? I'm getting out of here. And in just a little while, our heroes were aboard a river steamer and heading for home. All unaware that inside Bullwinkle is a banana containing the formula for a silent explosive. However, as the boat rocks slowly back and forth... Bullwinkle, what's happening? You're turning kind of green. It must be spring. <laughs> NH3CO2 is to a pinch of salt. What? I got the hiccups. I guess it must be the banana I ate about four episodes back. <gasps> and each 3 co 2 you truly really found a pitch of salt. Bullwinkle, you can remember everything you ever ate. True. So you must have eaten a secret formula. If it's such a secret, how come I keep blabbing it all over? That's what I mean. you got to get rid of those hiccups till we can get to somebody in authority. Is that authority, Wisconsin? Oh, if our friends had only known, they were at that moment being spied on by that arch-villain, that crumb of crumbs, that fiend of fiends... Say the name. <sighs> Boris Badenov. Ta-da! 
Boris, darling, could you hear Formula when Moose hiccuped? No, he's too far away. Come, we sneak a little closer. And just at that moment... <laughs> and the peach is sold. Thanks, Brock. You're going to give away the formula for sure unless we find a way to stop your hiccups. You. Yeah. You know, what we need is a good hiccups, Doctor. Boris, you heard? I heard. Darling, that's your cue. You're supposed to show up disguised as Hiccup Doctor. Natasha, I can't do it. Boris, why not? This time they're sure to recognize me. They never have. 79 disguises I used on those two. Not one did they ever see through. So? The law of averages is turning against me. It wouldn't dare. Boris, you're forgetting Article 6 of the Villain's Handbook. Article 6? Yes, look here. There is nobody so stupid as the hero of a TV cartoon show. Well, maybe you're right. Come on. As I was saying, what we need is a good hiccup, Doctor. Allow me to introduce myself. Who are you? I'm the ship's medical officer. Ship's doc? Of course they do. That voice! Where have I heard that voice? See, darling? I see it, but I don't believe it. No, sir, let's hear that nasty hiccup of yours. And Boris held up a stethoscope which was secretly hooked up to a tape recorder. Will the villains get the formula? Be with us next time for testing one, two, three, or tape a number. Last time, you remember, Bullwinkle got a strange kind of hiccup. <laughs> An H3CO2U235 and a pinch of salt. See? Must be the banana I ate a few episodes ago. True, for that banana had contained the secret formula for the silent explosive Hushaboom. And if that wasn't bad enough... You call? Uh, yes. Boris had just appeared as a hiccup doctor with his stethoscope hooked up to a tape recorder. Come, come, hick right in there. From here, Doctor? Now, wait a minute. That stethoscope is hooked up to a tape recorder. Who says? The narrator says. And he never lies, right? Right. Well, of course there's a tape recorder. I got to consult your case with a lady doctor. A lady doctor? Yes, darling. Who is she? This is Dr. Biotic. Not antibiotic. You guess. Oh, I keep up with the Kildares, you know, and... <laughs> an H3CO2U235 and a pinch of salt. No. Oh. Bullwinkle, you did it. Come on, Natasha, uh, uh, doctor. We got another appointment. What about my hiccups? You need a good scare, is all. So boo, darling. We got to answer emergency call. Bullwinkle, something's mighty funny about those two. That's odd. I don't hear anybody laughing. No, but in a small rowboat pulling away from the river steamer, there were a couple of muffled chuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, wait till fearless leader hears this tape, Natasha. It'll make even his ugly puss light up. Oh, he is ugly. Isn't he, Boris? Listen, he's got as bad a case of uglies as you can get. Why, he got aggravated uglies. He's got ugly he hasn't even used yet. <laughs> <laughs> and stupid. <laughs> oh, boy. Bad enough, is that you? Oh, bo 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 Boris is fearless leader. And my two-way wrist TV. Fearless leader, we were just talking about you. Well, don't. I'm top secret. Where are you, Chiefy? Right over your head. Look up, stupid. You heard him, Natasha. Look up. And sure enough, the sinister black superjet was zooming right overhead. Meet me at the crossroads in half an hour, bad enough. You bet, dear old superior, sir, signing off. Half an hour? We'll have to row pretty fast, Boris. You certainly will. And the one and the two and the big fat shoe and the three and the four. And as the helpless Natasha bent to the oars, back on board the riverboat, our friend were still baffled and confused. No, no, that's... that's... A Rocky and Bullwinkle, I know. Think he'd remember after all this time. But just then... You're Rocky and Bullwinkle. No, baffled and confused. Yeah, that's us. Come along with us, you're under arrest. Woofer, woofer! Protective custody. Official Secrets Act. They do? Walk this way. I can't. Why not? I'm knock need. Are you trying to be funny? Aren't you? No. You sure you're on the right program? Understand you can remember everything you ever ate. Oh, that again. Sure I can. Remember eating a banana a little while back? Do I? It had something written on the inside. It said... Grab him, Ben. And before Bullwinkle could move a muscle, he was bound and gagged. Hey, what's a big idea? Army, intelligence. That mean anything to you? Yeah, sounds like a contradiction in terms. Grab him, Joe. And in a trice, Rocky was also bound and gagged. <laughs> Well, it looks like a pretty quiet program from here on in. And just because Bullwinkle was going to give the formula for Hushaboom, which is... Grab him, Ben. And in a trice, I... <laughs> and meanwhile, Boris Badenoff is just about to play the tape recorder of the formula for his fearless leader. Tune in next time for the villain's victory dance or the jig is up. Ooh.
Ooh, I love these happy endings. Well, in our last episode, you remember some mysterious strangers tied and gagged idiot moose and sneaky little squirrel. <laughs> they also tied and gagged your friendly neighborhood narrator. <laughs> Leaving only us bad guys, eh, fearless leader? You say you've got hush -a boom formula from moose? You bet. He's on this tape recorder. Let's hear it. Okay. I got to consult your case with a lady doctor. Hello, darling. That's you, Natasha. Boys, meet Dr. Biotic. Not antibiotic. You guessed. Bad enough if you think I'm here to listen to lousy puns, you... Wait, wait, here comes good part. Oh, I keep up with the kill bears, you know, and... <laughs> NH3CO2, U235, and a pinch of salt. Oh, poor Winkle, you did it. There it is, fearless leader. Marvelous. Bad enough, I didn't know you had it in you. You think you're dealing with kids or something? Just for that, we are going to reduce your uncle's prison term to life. You're too good, fearless leader. And what's more, you could call me FL. Wowee! Now play that part back. I'll take notes this time. Okay, FL. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, there's something else. It's nothing, Eiffel, just a... Silence! <laughs> Wait till fearless leader hears this tape, Natasha. Boris, you didn't turn off machine. Oh, boy. This tape will make even his ugly puss light up. What was that? I'll turn it back now. No! He is ugly, isn't he, Boris? He's got as bad a case uglies as you can get. He's got aggravated uglies. <laughs> Pretty funny how I fell. He's got ugly he hasn't even used yet. Well, so much for the jokes. Jokes! Certainly, we were just kidding, FL. Fearless leader, are you bad enough? Of course, fearless leader, I wouldn't presume. This is the end for you, bad enough. Oh, boy. And as for that recorder, take that. And that. There. How do you like that? Ooh. I guess it didn't like it. Now what, Boris? What else? We run like rabbits. Good idea. On second thought, we take secret formula with us. You mean steal it? Why not? Funny, I can't think of a reason. And the two villains dashed off with the precious tape recording. Meanwhile, back on the boat. The chief do yet? Two minutes late. Everything set. Check. Got the moose tied and gag. Right. <laughs> Got the squirrel tied and gag. Right. Funny thing. What? Chief isn't usually late. You're right, that's funny. Funny, all right. Ha, ha, ha. You know, usually the narrator says, and suddenly a familiar figure entered the room and like that, then the chief shows up. I know. Uh, Joe, mm. only one thing. What? We tied and gagged the narrator, too. <laughs> Better take the tape off his mouth. Yeah. Otherwise, we stop the plot. Ben. Hmm? Might be a good idea. Joe? Yeah. You're a scream. Ha, uh, ha. Uh. Rip the tape off his mouth. Right. No! One thing we forgot. Yeah? He has a mustache. No. Hmm? Had a mustache. And just then, a familiar figure entered the room. Hello, Hello Chief. Chief. Well, I see you got him. Good work, fellows. Good heavens, it's Captain Pinkfuzz. My goodness, what happened to your lip? We'll find out next time in the missing mustache... Our hair today, gone tomorrow. Well, let's see what the score is today, shall we? Phyllis Leader is lying unconscious beside the tape recorder, which struck back at him. Boris and Natasha are running away with a tape recording of the formula for the silent explosive Hushaboom. And our heroes have been tied and gagged by a couple of mysterious strangers acting under orders from the chief. None other than our old friend, Captain Peter Peachfuzz. Mm hmm. What's the matter, Bullwinkle? Cat got your tongue? Do we let him go now, Chief? Well, naturally. But as the gag was removed from Rocky's mouth, he said... Hey, what's a big idea? Who are these fellas? And what's all this about a secret formula? A How fellas? How come we got tight and yeah, Chief. What happened to Put these back. Why haven't you... Try the other one. Ooh! Hello, Bullwinkle. I said, hello, Bullwinkle. Well, didn't you hear me? Sure, but I don't want to get gagged up again. <laughs> Yes, I know, Rocky, but... Chief. Yes, Joe? We've got to take the gag off the squirrel now. Oh, the SPCA call in again? No, we need the gag for another show. What show? The Unspeakables. Oh, I didn't know they did comedy. Sorry, squirrel. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. You were just doing your duty. You know, Ben? Yeah. He's a true blue squirrel. Salt of the earth. Nature's nobleman. Gets you right here. Let's go. Right. Good Goodbye. Goodbye. 
Gee, those fellows are sure dead, Pam. I don't know. That goodbye was a little hammy. And now on to recover the stolen formula. Yeah, on! This, this way! way! Now, wait a minute. We can't all go in different directions. But how do we decide where to go? Easy. Come in here a minute. And the captain led our heroes into the next room where there stood an enormous electronic machine. Hokey smoke! It's the Peter Peach Fuzz Polar Path Predictor Patent Pending. Hmm? It tells you what direction to go in. Well, how does it work? Well, I put a nickel in this end and... Boy, that's pretty impressive. Hush. It's about to give us the answer. Answer? That's your nickel, Captain. Yes, and it's heads. We go this way. And strange as it seems, our friends headed in a beeline straight for an old abandoned warehouse, which just happened to be the secret hideout of Boris and Natasha. Well, Dalek, you ready to put together the first batch of Hushaboom? You said it. Start tape machine. The next voice you hear will be Moose hiccuping and reciting formula. And as he recites, I mix ingredients. Go. <laughs> Hold that! Dolly, what happened? I think I mixed a little too fast, Natasha. Slow it down. <laughs> Sorry, Dolly. Here goes. Uh, and, uh, three, three, oh, two, three. Don't tell me, Dolly. A, a little, little too, too slow. slow. Two times the charm, Boris. I hope not. Hey, it makes me CO2, U235, and a pinch of salt. Aha! This has been a recording. Who cares? Natasha, I got it here. hush -a boom And just in time, darling. Look. Yes, outside the warehouse, our three friends were closing in rapidly. Well, what can be closed in can be closed out. And Boris prepared to drop his lethal test tube right on top of our heroes. Don't miss our next episode, Boom at the Top, or Boomwinkle loses his head. Well, in our last episode, Boris and Natasha had succeeded in manufacturing a batch of the silent explosive called Hushaboom. Natasha, this explosive may change the course of history. Sort of a boom to mankind, ha <laughs> ha. Please, no pawns. This is a solemn moment. Ooh, I can see it now. At last, safe crackers will really be able to crack safely. They won't even be arrested for disturbing the peace. Lovely night, officer. <laughs> Oh, is this going to be a great come and get it day, Natasha? Yes, darling, and they're coming to get it right now. Who? Who else? Moose and Squirrel. Well, here's our first chance to use Hoshiboom, Natasha. And leaning out of a top story, the wily Boris drew a bead on our boys. Boris, how much Hoshiboom is in test tube? <laughs> Enough to blow up all the nosy Parkovs and this whole building besides. But... Makes you feel all warm inside, doesn't it? Yeah, but... Bombs away! <laughs> But, Boris, if building blows up... And it will. And if we're in it... We will, too. We will... We will, too. Natasha, what am I doing? You're finishing off this episode with a bang, darling. I'll meet you around the corner in half an hour. Oh, I got to catch that test tube. And seizing a handy fielder's mitt, Boris dashed for the stairs. And so as our heroes reached the door of the warehouse... Stand back! Stand back! Hokey Smoke, what's that? Just a plug for another show. What show? Well, it's either Dr. Kildare or the Game of the Week. Craziest looking ball player I ever saw. You haven't been watching Kansas City lately. Phew. Hey, nice catch! How many outs is that? Allow me to introduce myself. J. Robert Uppendowner, world's greatest scientist at your service. What kind of a scientist are you? I'm a physicist, a physicist, a physicist. I'm a druggist. See my test tube? Come inside. I got lots of them. Yeah, well, what was that one doing up in the air? That's how all my ideas is coming to me. How? Out of a clear blue sky. I've heard of that, but I never really thought it happened. What is your latest invention? Uh, this, uh, well, it's a new soft drink. Soda pop? Oh, bigger than soda pop. What's it called? Soda pow. Catchy name. And because you witnessed my discovery, I'm going to give you the honor of drinking the first batch. Little do our heroes know that that test tube contains not soda pow, but hush -a boom the powerful silent explosive. Quiet, blabbermouth. Well, I whispered, didn't I? So here you are, you lucky fellow. Drink hearty. But, Dr. Oppendowner, don't you want to see how I like it? I already know. If you drink that, you'll never drink anything else. Farewell. And Boris dashed off to join his partner a safe distance away. Hmm, I wonder. Shall we join him, Captain? Why not? 
that voice. Where have I heard that voice? Rocky, you've heard more voices than Joan of Arc. Well, he's so. And Bullwinkle raised the fatal test tube to his lips. Are we far enough away now, Boris? Should be, honey bun. Spotlight, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our little show. This is Buddy Badenoff, and I'd like to do a few impressions for you. Boris, you are not the star of this show. Natasha, besides you and me, who's left? You know, you may be right. <laughs> and for my first impression, it is one of the narrator of a television series. <clears throat> oh, for heaven's sake. Tune in next week for Boris Talks to Himself or Mockingbird Heel. Well, last time, you remember, Bullwinkle was about to drink a test tube full of Hushaboom, the silent explosive. Meanwhile, a short distance away... Well, that's the end of Moose and Squirrel. I didn't hear anything, darling. Sure you did. You just heard a silent explosion. Welcome to the Buddy Badenoff Show, folks. What channel are we on, darling? Tune in and see. But when Natasha tuned a small TV set to this very channel... Are you all right, Bullwinkle? It is a fiddle and twice as stringy. Boris, what happened? To find out, let's go back a little to when Bullwinkle raised that test tube to his lips. Well, here's how, fellas. Wait a second. You're not actually going to drink that, are you? Why not? Without a straw? Hey, that's right. I do need a straw. Three straws? Yeah, all for one and one for all, and nobody gets enough. Come on, there's some straws at my place. I'll just leave this soda pal right here till we get back. But unbeknownst to Bullwinkle, he had placed the test tube on top of a radio receiver, which was just about to broadcast a message from Fearless Leader. Fearless Leader calling Boris Badenoff. Do you hear me, Badenoff? As the mad dictator's voice rose, the radio receiver began to vibrate, and so did the test tube rack. Badenoff, you incompetent income poop. I'll give you just three seconds to answer. One, two. <laughs> and as the hushaboom hit the floor... The building exploded. Boris, the whole building went up. And whatever goes up must come down. Are you trying to tell me something, darling? Well, yes. What is it? Duck! Oh, 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 oh. And look, Boris, somebody is throwing party streamers. Party streamers? Natasha, that was the tape with the formula on it. Well, we goofed again. Let's face it, Natasha, as villains, we are a collective flop. Oh, cheer up, Boris. Maybe someday we'll make the FBI's top ten. FBI's top ten? We can't even make Kane's hundred. Pardon me, do I understand that you blew up this warehouse? Boris, the fuzz is here. Here's our chance. You bet we did, Sheriff. And you're responsible for all this wreckage? <laughs> of course. Then I'm afraid you're under arrest. At last we've made the big time. You're arresting us as saboteurs? No. Spies? No. Master criminals, maybe? Oh, no. Mad bombers? No, no. Then what? You are little bugs. Come along. Oh, oh boy. And meanwhile, a short distance away... Call for Captain Peach Fuzz! Call for Captain Peach Fuzz! Here, boy. Telegram, Captain. Hey, aren't you the little feller that used to step out of thousands of store windows and counters all over the country? Yes, but I had to stop. How come? Kept cutting myself on the broken glass. Hey, listen to this. It's from one of our viewers. He says if we'll get rid of the mad doctor, the Hushaboom formula will be safe. Move along, you. Can't flab the rabby gravel dap. Well, there he goes. The formula is safe. How do you know that's the guy, Bullwinkle? He was wearing a white coat and scowling. So that makes him... A mad doctor. Oh, Cisco. Oh, Pancho. Oh, hey, wait a minute. This is the ending of another television program about cowboys. It always worked okay for them. Yeah, but we don't do that on this show. We always walk arm and arm into the sunset like this. Yeah. And the narrator says... Tune in next time for the further adventures of Rocky the Flying Squirrel and Bullwinkle Moose. Ho, 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 Cisco! Wise guy. Well, I guess that about wraps up another Rocky show. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. I did. I always say... A uh, Bullwinkle, time for us to go. Already? Okay, but first... Here are some of the people who made this show impossible.
for me again. Well, see you next time. Ready, Bullwinkle? Allie!